verse 32. First Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32. I want to teach tonight on the subject that I titled the tribe of Issachar. Give us Amplified. The tribe of Issachar. This is a teaching that is going to work upon our discernment and help us to be people of stature in the spirit. And I want you to please follow along. We're going to do a lot of prayers intermittently and then after the teaching, glad we've taken the altar call. So we have some time to press a bit. It says, and of Issachar, men who had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. It says 200 chiefs and their kinsmen were under their command. Let's go back to KJV. Father, grant us grace even by your spirit in the name of Jesus. The Bible talks about a very strange tribe. It calls it the sons of Issachar. And then the Bible tells us three things about these men that become prophetic lessons for us to learn as we seek to mature in spiritual things. The Bible says there were men that had understanding of the times. Very incredible credential that there were men that had understanding not just of things, but they had understanding of times. And then the Bible says that there were people who did not only have understanding of the times, they knew what Israel ought to do as per those times and seasons. And the Bible says the heads of them were 200. And as a result of their understanding of the times and the knowledge of what to do, the Bible says all their brethren were at their commandment. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. One of the dominion systems in this kingdom, and especially as it concerns living in the cosmos, is the ability to understand the ways of the spirit. To have spiritual intelligence enough to be able to discern times and to discern seasons. There are many people whose lives ministries, businesses right now have crash landed simply because they did not have the spiritual intelligence to understand and to interpret times. Hallelujah. I have said it many times and it bears repeating again that God is a God of times and seasons. Please write it down. In the dealing of God with men, He's fragmented his dealings to work with the law of times and seasons. Times and seasons. Times and seasons. That means everything under heaven functions as a product of time and seasons. We have in Nigeria here what we call the rainy season. We have the dry season, the two main seasons. Across the globe, they have all kinds of seasons, autumn, spring, summer, winter, you know. And, and there are many things that happen across those seasons. A good farmer takes advantage of the seasons for the productivity of his crops or animals. There are seasons that naturally come with certain advantages. Hallelujah. And now the Bible says... That among the many things that could be said of these sons of Issachar, the men of this tribe, is that number one, please write it down, that they were men who understood the times. They had an understanding, not as an individual, can you imagine, as a corporate people, that there was a structure within their tribe that helped them to understand times. So the first thing we see about this tribe of Issachar is that there were men who had understanding of times. They knew how to maximize times and seasons because they understood the times. 
Number two, the Bible says to know what Israel ought to do. So it's one thing to understand the times, but to be able to draw out a strategy that becomes an advantage within that time. That is the second thing that they had. The Bible says to know. They had knowledge. They had strategy to know what Israel ought to do. So they had an understanding of the times. Number two, they knew what Israel ought to do. And the Bible says, as a result, there was dominion. Dominion. Their brethren had to be at their command for direction. Give us Genesis chapter 1 and verse 14, please. This is the creation story. And the Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 14. That God said, let there be light in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night. Please pay attention. And it says, let these lights be for signs and let these lights be for seasons and let these lights be for years, for days and let these lights be for years. You know what this meant? Let me tell you this. I've read this for I don't know how long, but the Lord opened my eyes and Notice that timing was fragmented into day and night, and then signs, seasons, days, years. And the Bible says for every one of them, there is a kind of light that signifies when it is day. There is a kind of light that signifies when it is night. There is a kind of light that signifies years and special signs, even in the heavenlies. So the first thing that we see the sons of Issachar having is what I wrote here as discernment that came through understanding. Please write it down. Discernment through understanding. Discernment through understanding. The Bible said they understood the times. And that that discernment came through understanding most people are unable to maximize seasons please listen in their lives because they are bankrupt of discernment what is discernment the faculty of spiritual perception please write it down that when we say you are somebody who has discernment it means you have trained your organs to be able to perceive the impulses of the spirit discernment is the faculty of spiritual perception the ability to know what god is doing the ability to know what the devil is doing the ability to know what is happening even within the cosmos is called discernment it is a superior faculty that the believer in partnership with the holy spirit can sustain and the bible lets us know that one of the indices for measuring the maturity of a believer is the strength of your discernment are we still together that strong meat belongs to them who are of full age it says who by reason of use have exercised themselves to discern between good and evil it takes discernment to know what is really good and it takes discernment to know what is really evil because as far as the cosmos is concerned good can look like evil and evil can look like good are we together so this tribe of Issachar trained themselves they stepped up their, their discernment, their ability to perceive things happening within the heavenlies. Listen, let me tell you the truth. There is no believer I know who can excel consistently when you are dull of discernment. The world is too spiritual for you to excel bankrupt of discernment. Respectfully speaking, there are people who have died today that they shouldn't have died if they had discernment. Am I right on that? Yeah. There are many, many things that have happened around our lives, ministries, businesses, homes, that are credited directly to the absence of discernment. 
the ability to read the writings on the wall, the ability to know what the Holy Spirit is saying per time. There are businesses that many of us should not have gotten into if you had discernment. Now, watch this. The Bible says the Spirit speaketh expressly. You know, that some in the latter time will deviate from the truth and they will give themselves to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons. My expression there is the fact that the Spirit speaketh expressly. The Holy Ghost is not always talking, but the Holy Ghost speaks. But many people have not trained their discernment to recognize the voice of God. You may want to make reference to my teaching, the voice of God. I did a teaching there helping us to understand that when we talk about the voice of God, we don't just mean the speakings of God. We mean every spiritual mechanism that can be used by God to communicate His will and His intent to the believer. It's called the voice of God. So the voice of God is not just limited to the sounds of God. It is, it is a holistic capture of every mechanism that can be deployed by God to communicate His intent to the believer. The objective of the voice of God is that the believer comes into the awareness of the will of God. Because the jurisdiction to enjoy God's power, God's favor, God's grace is being at the center of the will of God. In fact, the assignment of God's power is to bring you from wherever you are into the will of God. Are we together? So many believers have not been able to train their discernment. There are many fathers today who the realm of the spirit kept showing them that an attack was coming on their children. And because they did not train themselves spiritually to discern, they could not do anything about it. There are many people who by signs, similitudes, scripture, dreams, God has been showing them several things. Positive things to happen and negative things to avert. But because they have not trained themselves to discern. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I submit to you that in these end times, it is costly to be dull of discernment. It can cost you your life. Hallelujah. Jesus looks at Nathaniel, a man who just finished insulting him. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And he looks at Nathaniel, and here's what he says. An Israelite indeed, in whom there is no guile. It takes discernment to speak like that. Jesus looks at the man called Peter. And even though he saw a spirit behind Peter, he said, get thee behind me, Satan. And he said, Peter, Satan has desired to sift you like wheat. In other words, there is nothing wrong with you as a person. Your compassion and your good heart is an advantage for the kingdom. But I need to separate you from this ugly spirit that is trying to destroy you. Discernment. In the book of Acts, the Bible talks about the apostles. Paul. Are we together now? Yes. How that a damsel came and met them and this damsel was using divination and bringing money and gains for her people. And when she saw them, she began to preach that these are the men of God who have brought glad tidings. You find that in Acts chapter 16. The first 24 verses talk about the, the Bible says this happened for many days. And one time... He got angry, angry in his spirit. Are we together now? And he looked at her, Paul now, being gripped in his spirit. He commanded that spirit to come out of her. That's how they landed in the prison that they used praise and worship to come out of. This was what got them there. Hallelujah. Many people are dull of discernment. There are some of us who never seem to get free from trouble. You walk headlong into trouble. Every scheming of darkness against you walks because there is no discernment. When the Holy Ghost is saying pray, you are not even sure he's the one speaking. And quite honestly, you don't care until you land into trouble. There are many people about to start journeys that the Holy Spirit keeps pointing to them. It does not have to be a journey that ends you in danger. We are talking with respect to the will of God, not good or bad. There are many things that you will arrive well, and yet you are already dead. 
Once it is not the will of God, you are still in trouble. So, you, we don't rate life based on good or bad. We rate life based on the will of God or outside of the will of God. There are many, if the devil wants to destroy you, he will schedule many good things to happen in your life that are outside the will of God. Are we together? For instance, giving you a visa, when is the will of God for you to be in Nigeria? Now, that may not be an evil thing, sociologically speaking. But you will travel not only out of the will of God, out of your destiny, out of so many things. Why didn't God stop Jonah from entering the boat? When Jonah was paying for the boat, I can imagine that every passenger that was entering that boat, they, I'm sure the angels were saying, oh God, so all your business, oh God, is for nothing. You are about to lose your property because one person got a boat. I was on his way going. And then when the people were throwing everything, he kept quiet and was sleeping. It was when they casted lots and it fell on him. He said, truly, okay, let me talk now. I am a prophet. God sent me to Nineveh. But I know God. He's a merciful God. If I talk to them, they will repent. I don't want them to hear the message so that you will help me and punish them. So what do we do with you now? Throw me out. You thought the people say, ah, that's too much. They threw him out. They had lost their property and everything. Are we together? Thank God you're a prophet. They threw him out. Listen. God has helped us to come thus far today by this faculty of discernment. I look back at my life and I can see where Glory and shame was separated by the distance of a needle, only waiting for discernment. That if you had taken one wrong step, your life would have crash landed for nothing. Hear me, God is speaking to someone. In this end time right now, the believer must train yourself, and I'm going to teach you how. You must train yourself to step up your discernment. You can have five people come, even if it is Judas. Not every kiss is a sign of love. A kiss that is supposed to be a sign of love and intimacy can be a strategy to the enemy. The one I'm kissing is the one that must die. When he came and kissed Jesus, Jesus looked at him and said, you betray your master with a kiss. He didn't say sorry. He didn't say anything. He just left him. There, for some of you who put your cheek for everybody, you need to um, you understand it's a figurative statement. Some of us are so fragile emotionally that even when the devil brings his mouth near you, you just believe that every sign of a kiss means love. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Every handshake is not a handshake of fellowship. There are handshakes that are, that they are signals of deception. Every prophecy is not prophecy that edifies you. No matter how it sounds, it is the ministry of the Spirit behind it. It is not everything that glitters that is gold. Are we together now? Say discernment. Please shout it. Say discernment. There are many children today whose destinies would not have been wasted, respectfully speaking, if their parents had discernment. Remember what happened when Samson was about to be born. Manoah asked a question and they said, no, 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 please, let the angel return and give us details as to this child. We know that since this child came by prophecy, he would not be an ordinary child. And instructions came that he would be a Nazarene and his hair would not be cut. And that became the symbol of his strength until he decided to kill himself by himself. Are we together now? Listen to me. Every mantle and every destiny has the, the spiritual code of operation that protects that oil. Listen, let me share with you a, a powerful secret. There is a consecration for every mantle. It's not enough to know you have a mantle. You must know the formula given by God to protect it. There are certain graces that is in the place of worship that that anointing is released. You can be anointed and you do not know by discernment what activates the working of the Spirit within you. And you will find out your life will look like you are not called. Are we together? 
there are people because of the kind of destiny you have for you the formula god gives you is every time you want to see a miracle hold hands with your husband or your wife and agree that is it no matter what deception once two of you hold your hands and pray the truth must come out it may not be a formula for everybody but by discernment you can step into what becomes your secret code of operation unbelievers know this but many many believers are bankrupt when it was time for the prophet to prophesy, he did not feel like prophesying. He said, bring me a misrael. And as soon as they began to pray a misrael, the Bible said the hand of the Lord. He didn't say the hand of the Lord was coming anyway. He understood the secrets that provoked the hand of the Lord. Are we together? Those who lack discernment in this end time, ladies and gentlemen, whether as men of God, whether as business people, one operation of the spirit of discernment can be the difference between victory or defeat in the life of a believer. Some of you are about to get into businesses right now that will make you cry from March till December. You've not had discernment. You don't care. Some of you are about to drive good people in your life because you do not have discernment to see. Everybody who comes to me must be a millionaire. And someone will come looking like, like someone who just came out of prison. Whereas that's the person the anointing is on to help you. But because you lack discernment, some of you have driven everybody holding the key to your door. Now you are wondering why the door does not open. Because if you see John the Baptist, he does not look like a prophet. He will come with rags and sometimes we're eating locusts and wild honey. Who wants to be a friend to such a man? However, that's the man God has chosen. Are we together? I remember when God started speaking about coming to Abuja. I've shared with you that story to help you. It took three years of wrestle, wrestle. Before that time, I could be having a program somewhere. I would travel into Zaria, arrive around 5.36, go and have a meeting, and then by the next day, I'm out of the way again. But when it began to come, I said, Ah, oh God, what is this one again? I struggled with the Spirit verifying and re-verifying and re-verifying. When God finally gave me the verification, I went with my eyes closed. Listen, let me tell you the truth. For some of you, God is speaking to you right now. You are taking too many careless destiny steps and ignoring discernment. The mercy of God has been shielding you, but I don't know who I'm speaking to. You need to mark time. Speed is not the same as rushing. Listen, do you know that speed is a function of clarity of direction or clarity of destination? If you are looking for a house, say you enter a close or an avenue, once you don't know the house, you slow down. Is that true? Be so that you don't pass it not knowing. And then you honestly ask questions. You can now ask someone, sorry, where is the birthday celebration happening? Oh, turn left, right. You see that blue car? That's the house. The moment the direction is clear, there's no limitation to speed again. There are many of you, you have not gotten direction for ministry yet. There are many gray areas around your life and yet you are running. For you, a prophetic word tonight is you need to slow down. Because the distance you will need to turn back on, it may be too far. You are already running, speed in the wrong direction is adding burden to yourself. Is someone getting what I'm saying now? Discernment. Who told you it's God's will for you to be in UK? Who told you it's God's will for you to be in Abuja? I've told you, ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. Greener pasture is not a physical location. Greener pasture is where the voice of God is for you. There are people suffering in every nation, including our dear nation. It is not a physical location that, this, that, 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 um, that, that spells out your prosperity, but where the voice of the Lord is. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And Isaac sowed in that land. Hallelujah. Our fathers of old, some of them were not very educated. 
but they would never do anything until they verify. The subject of God said was strong in their generation. God has not spoken to me, oh, thank you for what you have said, but let me inquire of the Lord. It is the reason why they had, they had tremendous success with their lives. Our generation now respectfully is so scientific. We say wisdom is profitable to direct. And our wisdom is Sophia, not divine wisdom. It has been landing us in all kinds of trouble. God is speaking to someone. You want to follow the order of that tribe of Issachar. You must slow down in your life and be sure of the voice of God before you take steps in your life and destiny. Is someone listening to what I'm saying? Man of God, don't assume it is time to start church. What makes you think you should start church? All my contemporaries, even sons that I raised in ministry, they are in ministry. So what? Anna the prophetess, how many people do you think she raised? And yet she remained in the temple. Ah, may you never go where God is not. Oh, I'm praying for you. May you never go where God is not. Hallelujah. Moses said, do not let us depart from here. If your presence will not go with us. You see, let me tell you. Life will propose so many wonderful things. They don't have to be evil, I repeat. The journey of discernment is not about good and bad alone. Please hear me. Let me repeat it again. The journey of discernment is not about good or bad alone. It's about being in the will of God. Lack of discernment will lead you to many good things that will end up becoming a burden to your destiny because they are not luggages that were allocated for you to carry. Your flight will be impeded because you have carried all kinds of things. Hallelujah. I believe in common sense. I'm not a fool. But I believe in the voice of God. I'm also not a fool. Are we together? Common sense has landed people in trouble. The oldest man on earth today is not more than 120 years. I'm, I'm not sure. The highest I saw was 141 along the road to Ekiti, who just died. But I don't know Guinness Book of Record or what, what's that, that thing. I don't know who they have as the world oldest person. But let me tell you the truth. This scripture is old and the Spirit of God is He was there when creation began. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. It says, lean not on your own understanding. Verse 6 says, in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. 7 says, be not wise in your own understanding. It says, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. For there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, the Bible declares. It says, but the end thereof are the ways of death. There are many people who have no business being poor today. Their problem was not intellectual bankruptcy. Their problem was that they do not sustain the ability to discern. In the days of Noah, whether you were a businessman, whether you were an architect, whether you were a politician, after 120 days, you were going to die if you were not in the boat. You were not in the ark. It's as simple as that. There are times and moments in history, ladies and gentlemen, where it is not about the wisdom of the wise. It is about the ability to discern the voice and the will of God. My prayer for myself and my prayer for this ministry all the time is that I find myself at the epicenter of the will of God. Now, let me tell you the truth. There is a risk if you embrace the way of discernment. There will be a lot of disruption to what you call order in your life. If you are not willing to endure that disruption, then forget about a glorious life. Hmm. Are we together? Do you know what would have happened to Joseph? We never heard of Joseph and the exploits of his carpentry again. That man just received the burden of fathering Jesus to maturity and had to sacrifice a lot. But he knew that he was in the will of God. What of Mary? I'm sure as a young virgin, the girl just had a plan towards her life and destiny. Listen, I, I pray for our generation. May we not be too organized to the point that God cannot bring us now to fit the mold of his will for us. Let's be careful with this over-dependence on intellect. 
I submit to you that when God started with us, this was not, let me tell you the truth. The way of the spiritual man is very, very strange. There are many times in the journey you don't even know where you are going to. You have to depend on the one leading you, not an assurance of where you are going. You trust the person more than the destination. Follow me is the mission. We live in a world today that is full of guarantees. Can you guarantee me that if something happens? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Are we learning? The men of Issachar had understanding of the times. You must know how to discern. You must know how to discern. You must know how to discern. Lord, this business idea looks wonderful. And my brain seems to agree with it. But can you give me a moment? Let me go to God in the place of prayer and hear what he has to say. God will only take responsibility for what he initiated. If you initiate it, it means you are vetted that you have the power to manage the outcomes that come there. Hallelujah. That is why we lack power in the body of Christ. It is not about physical strength. It is about discernment. More love. More power. More of you in my life. More love. More power. More of you in my life. Let me tell you how God trained us. At the beginning of every season, we used to teach people those days that your birthdays are not time to just jump around and put balloon and celebrate. Balloon is only after you have spoken with God. Three days, two days to people's birthdays, they will go and lock themselves. Lord, what is the next phase of my life? But right now, people celebrate their birthday one year in advance and God is not in it. And they move back ten years. Pastors will lock themselves and go and pray to fast, not just for power. Lord, what are you saying? This is how we got here. I'm telling you sincerely. Do you know what the next five years is going to be like? Do you know what the next ten years is going to be like? I've said with you my story. When God in this this was when you know internet was in its infancy, when God gave us an instruction to carry our audio teachings, put it online, and his angel will take it across the nation. And that was it. Discernment. That one step opened up doors of untold opportunities. God is speaking to someone. It's not because you cannot see the power of God. It's because you have thrown away the value of the voice of the Spirit and discernment. There are, you don't hear again that someone locked himself. Where are you? I'm spending time with God for three days. What for? I need to get direction for the next season of my life. Our over-dependence on brain work is what is making us failures. I'm saying this respectfully speaking. More love. That's what we want to see. More power. More of you in my life. More love, more power, more of you in my life. A year or two before we moved to Abuja, I remember when we started having so many visits from the U.S., a group of people came from U.S. and they came, they went back with such zeal and transformation and they did not even tell me. They went to open an office for me in the U.S. And then they just announced as a good news that Apostle, just to let you know that we have opened an office for you. In fact, um, you can be sure right now that when you come to the U.S. there is an office. Say breakthrough. No, no, I'm not being sarcastic. That's what most people will call it. What do you call that kind of favor? Remember, we are advocates of favor. But I said, thank you for that opportunity. Let me carry my good old 
childish principle that has worked so far. Lord, what are you saying? God did not even waste his time and say, there, there is a way you walk with God, Ba. As you are approaching him, you are, you are, your heart is so connected. If God does not need to start wasting his time talking to you like an unbeliever. It's like a husband and a wife. There's a way a wife already knows the answer. Honey, she stops there. You already know what the answer is. You can grow into that level of intimacy with the Spirit. I hope you know what I'm saying now. That someone is conjuring an enchantment against you and an energy comes upon you. You wake up in the night, you can't explain what is it, but that no divination, no enchantment against you. Appa, sit down and just say, This person is no. Scriptures like arrow just fire out from your spirit. Is someone learning? Hear me. The order of Issachar is the survival pattern for the last days. You need to master the art of spiritual perception. You must be so close to the Holy Ghost that you can you can perceive the impulses of the spirit. This looks like an open door, but I don't know why there is a restraint in my spirit. Even though it's a great door, please keep it open. Let me go back to God. God, what do you have to say? And you stay there till he speaks. You don't let your tiredness answer you on behalf of God. And you say, I've prayed for three hours. I assume he say yes. No. Are we together? This was the secret of the, the valiancy of great men in the Bible. Should I pursue, they will go and inquire of God. Many non-Christians and diviners do that till today. They will never take any action, whether in business, in whatever, until they have an assurance from heaven. Let me tell you this. Some of us that you see that look like we are great, I confess to you, I'm speaking to the globe, it is not because of anything in ourselves. We have simply mastered the childishness of staying till his voice comes. Mm, staying till his voice comes. But when that voice comes, it comes with tremendous power and energy according to Ezekiel 2 and verse 2. And the spirit entered me when he spake unto me. So you can find a man look so slow in destiny. But in two months, God will do something with that person that will cover up for 10 years. And you are wondering, from whence came this energy? The energy came with the voice. The energy came with the voice. These are missions to UK, you see, and the US. It was already on plan for a few years. Shared it with the leaders. I'm sure they are used to me now. Once I say we'll do something and you hear me keep quiet about it, just leave me and God like that. I just kept quiet since God kept quiet. But when the word came, it came with energy. It came with power. Man of God, don't assume because everybody is doing conferences, you get up and go and do it. Don't assume because everybody is opening branches, you go and do it. I'm saying this respectfully speaking. Don't assume. No. Father, According to your prophetic program for me, how many children should I have? Ah, I went to school. How can I be asking God how many children? You'll be surprised that in God's mind is three. You now go and give that to five. Those two, of course God is merciful. But you'll be surprised the, the headache you will get from the remaining two. And you are now asking, God, is this how you want to punish me? I'm sorry if I'm touching an area that is a bit touchy, but it is very important. Hallelujah. Three days before Koinonia will start, before the service, I went back to God again to pray, crying my heart before Him. And I said, God, I'm human. I can make mistakes. Please, if it is not you and it is not your voice, I pray and I cry unto you that you will speak to me. And I vow under God, if God had told me he was not the one, I would have come here and apologized before the whole world. I'm not too proud to say sorry. 
discernment discernment to know what you ought to do you need to go back right now and start re-examining your life in light of this thing and you will find out that some of you have been running anyhow anything that comes once it makes sense you jump at it no spiritual men don't work like that it is not to make you judgmental there are times you maximize opportunities don't get me wrong but a spiritual man is one who discerns okay this is a great business would you give me one night let me just pray let me just seek counsel no no it must be now tell the person may god bless you god who supplies jehovah jireh he will come back again don't put yourself in any kind of anything that needs your being too fast that you even have to throw god out is already bringing trouble speed without god is a highway to destruction make sure he's the one who becomes the captain of your speed is someone learning let us become a people of discernment it will help you to know what to be part of it will help you to know what to not be part of don't jump at things because of the physical expression and the flamboyancy that they carry spiritual people do not work like that it is not to make you this teaching is not to make you judgmental i hope you understand what i'm saying yes but you must learn to be spiritual you must learn to be spiritual you will know what kind of gift to accept. Someone can come and give you a gift. And you look at it. And something you should be glad about. You see, Ba, once you invest in building your spirit, respect the impulses that come from that spirit. Why am I being troubled over something that should give me joy? You may not know what it is, but just stop where you are and go back to the place of prayer lord this job that is supposed to give me joy is it just human fear or it is you restraining me how can i get a contract of 20 billion i should be rejoicing but now i'm i'm tomorrow i'm going to collect the award letter and i cannot sleep in the night if it's an attack let me cast it what is there but let me tell you what many of us will do. You will first send the text, Apostle, there's a spirit fighting my breakthrough. It cannot be the will of God that I got 20 billion naira. Stand up and pray with me, oh. And you see the thing about God, ba, because the Holy Spirit is a gentle spirit. His assignment is to restrain you according to the level of your yieldedness. The moment you begin to struggle with the Holy Ghost, it is fearful when God leaves you to yourself. <clears throat> if you are with me, please say amen. amen. I don't know why God is speaking this to someone, but this is a very serious prophetic message for someone tonight. What was the second thing they did? The sons of Issachar. The Bible says they had the strategy for the season to know what Israel ought to do. It's not enough to have discernment. Please hear me. Dominion is strategy dependent. Write it down. Dominion in the cosmos is strategy dependent. For every height, every mountain, every level in the spirit you must go through the sacrifice of alignment to receive the strategy that commands and maintains dominion per season hear me just because the red sea parted does not mean if you stand before jordan for you it means the sea should part for you the strategy will be an energizing of the spirit to walk on water don't assume that because the red sea parted every time you stand before a sea you say it parts. that is not the only formula just because samson carried the jawbone of a donkey and killed three thousand philistines does not mean oh elisha that when they surround you the strategy will be to fight there are times it will be to make them blind and lead them to samaria where they will eat and give you rest do you have the strategy warriors in the bible were people who paid the price to receive strategy joshua circumcised himself and all the men that came out of egypt of uh, uh, the israelites
that came out of Egypt and they waited for the arrival of the captain of the Lord's army. When he arrived, he gave them a strategy. He said, if it is Jericho you are going to bring down, don't try to fight them. They will kill you. Jericho is a strong city. Here is the formula. Go round once. Just once. Every day. And then on the seventh day, let the priests and the singers be in front. And then you go around seven times. As soon as you reach the seventh time, let there be a shout, a healer. It's called the shout of a king. He says when you shout, that fence will go down. Joshua said, I've got it. I'm sure he called the warriors and they brought their swords. He said, keep it. This is not the time to fight. <clears throat> For many of us, every time we see enemies, you bring out your knife. There are times you bring out the trumpet. There are times you step back and allow the worshippers to be the ones to go in battle. Oh, Jehoshaphat. It is not always war with a knife. There are times you use honor like Esther. That becomes your weapon of war. There are times you fight for the Lord has given you victory. There are times you allow the Red Sea to deal with the Egyptians. Your own is for the sea to open and you go. Have you obtained the strategy for this season you are in? Don't enter seasons assuming a former strategy. No, it can cost you your life. What gave you victory yesterday may lead to utter defeat tomorrow. Man of God, don't as one day God gave you an instruction to ask people to sow into your life or sow into the ministry. And you responded and you said, well, I have a church building. Please, so, because it was God that said it, you gave an announcement that did not make sense, and one billion came from it, and you built. Don't assume that that is the way God wants you to raise funds for another project. You will make a call and 10,000 will not come. Rather, the insults that will come will be more than 10 billion worth of insults. I'm not, I hope you are getting something now. Please write it down. For every prophetic season in your life, you must obtain the strategy for dominion. For every prophetic season in your life and of your life, you must obtain a strategy for your dominion. Don't make assumptions. We win by the strategies we are given in the spirit. No wonder the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, it says, but that they are mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds, casting down every imagination is the word yes, sir, and bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ. The weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. Your promotion is coming and they are fighting you in the office. Don't assume that the strategy is to go and open the door of your boss and shout and yell at him. After all, I'm a king and a priest. You go and open his door and say, Mr. Man, let me tell you, it's not because I'm afraid of you. I went to school before you were born. And you start saying, and the man will just keep quiet. Once you finish, okay, I'm sorry for offending you. Leave the job. I said, no, that's not leave the job. You have brought yourself into a greater calamity and greater trouble. What is the strategy for my remaining a, an executive director? I am the only Christian among 10 non-Christians. Lord, what is the strategy for survival? Most believers have not mastered, even for businessmen. What is the strategy for my profiting for this year? Are we together now? Yes. Oh, it is God that gives power to get wealth. I know that I'll... <clears throat> Don't assume. The person talking to you is not stupid, ladies and gentlemen. Believe me, I know what I'm saying. Ministers, don't assume that because you executed something and it worked last year, you must go to the Spirit and say, Lord, what is the blueprint for the season? This is where the danger of blind copying of things. We can be inspired and motivated by people, but you must be careful. It is always at thy word that we move, not at thy intention. Master, we have toiled all night, nevertheless, at thy word. And they knew what Israel ought to do. Do you know what you need to do in this season to prosper? 
Man of God, do you know what you need to do, respectfully speaking, for your ministry to thrive? Father, mother, do you know what to do in this season to obtain the school fees of your children? Apostle, I've been getting a job. Listen, look at me, please. Uh, I'm from 2018 to 2020 they usually give me a job but since pandemic they did not give me the job if brook cherry is dry find out from god where else to go otherwise you would die elijah he gave you brook cherry for a season and he commanded a raven to come there when the water dried up it was a sign that that season too had come to an end don't remain at brook cherry there waiting for a raven the raven may not come every day you need to know where the address of the widow in Zarephath. And there were many widows in Zarephath. He needs to tell you which one to meet. If you are with me, say amen. amen. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. Ah. Father, open my eyes to see the formula that controls my dominion for this season. Not everything translates to your victory. The Bible says now, thanks be to God, which causes us always to triumph. Have you received by the Spirit, by the sacrifice of consecration and the sacrifice of alignment, have you received the strategy for your excelling in business? Have you received the strategy for your excelling in ministry? Have you received the strategy for training your children? Don't assume that because you have children, this is how they are doing it. Who are the day? Their destinies are not the same. So Manoah called and said, It is not enough to know that you are giving us a child. Please reveal to us how should this child be trained? And a strategy was given. Let his hair not be cut. He shall be a Nazarene unto God. And that became his strategy. Notice when Satan came to attack Samson through Delilah. All he was looking for was a revelation of the strategy. That strategy is supposed to be a secret between you and God. That is your, that is your advantage. You will tremendous power in ministry. There are things God has told me as a person. It's a unique, it's a unique dealing between me and God. That for as long as those things are kept, your relevance is kept. Samson, know what keeps your strength. If it's your hair protected jealously, it is better for your leg to be injured, but that hair remains. If you are Elijah, if you like bab like my hair like this, it doesn't carry anything because the power is not on the hair. We win by strategies. Please hear me. We win by strategies. Businessmen, it's time for you to stop doing conventional things and go and stay with the spirit and say, show me my secret to dominion. All based on scripture, but this has been custom built for my own victory. As a man of God, you need to obtain grace from God. Lord, what is the secret that you have placed upon my life? How do I dispense the word? What is the secret that controls the working of your anointing in my life? I was listening to a message by A.A. A. Allen. And he was talking about the fact that he desired the power of God so seriously. He went and locked himself and he told his wife, Honey, you will not see me again. I'm crying until God shows me the secret to spiritual power. As if it's not in the Bible. And he went back and locked himself. And according to him, he said God gave him seven instructions. And said for you. If you control these seven instructions, they become the formula to the revelation of the power of God upon your life. But men like William Branham, that was not their experience. And yet all of them operated in power. Listen, let me tell you, when Satan comes to attack you, he attacks what the formation of your altar with God. That's what he comes to attack. What did God say, Eve and Adam? I don't, don't give me your opinion. What did God say? What is responsible for your enjoying the Eden life? 
There are many of us who are about to give Delilah very cheaply the formula of your hair because there's no discernment. Champions are champions because there is something in their life they protect that becomes the secret. Not secret because it is hidden. Secret because of the power. It controls many things in their lives. There are many people, if you separate yourself from worship, you have separated yourself from the mysteries that control the flow of power in your life. There are people, if you separate yourself from prayer, consecration, people have their various formulas, the, the spiritual combination that produce power in their lives. There are people who God will make certain demands on them. Before they ever go out for a crusade, they must fast for at least three days. It is not like that in the Bible, but that is a customized dealing God gave them. And for as long as they keep it, it is a covenant that protects the purity of the anointing. And yet for somebody, he can be strolling on the road and they say, can you come and help us at this crusade ground? And he will come and stand there and that, it will look like he's been preparing for it for 10 years. My question for you is, have you received the strategy that controls victory for this season? One of the blessings of discernment is that it helps you not only to know God, but you know the ways of God. Are we together? When you go and meet a herbalist and tell that herbalist, um, Sir, I'm trying to look for money for a political position or something. Do you know? He will consult with the spirit realm and come up with a strategy for you. Is that true? He will not tell you, go and give everybody that strategy, but you say, that's based on your request. This is what the realm of the spirit has said is the requirement. Bring a goat or bring a cow and then go to a road where there are so many beggars, give to, do all of these things, and you honor that strategy and with the foolishness of that strategy, within the limit of divination, it will seem to produce a semblance of tremendous results. But when we come to God, we are not interested in receiving strategies. Joshua, do not go and knock the gate of Jericho and say, open, you want to fight. You may not survive. Jericho is a city that nothing comes in and nothing comes out. And it is not always by your sword. The fence is too thick to use sword. You need to go back and find out. Jehoshaphat, grant them access to revelation and let them know that there are times that God can make enemies fight themselves. What you need is to sing. It may not make sense, but sing. There are times that you can go and lock yourself and God will say, take your employment letter. Don't talk to anybody about your promotion. You just place it on the ground and dance around it. And he said, God, but I went to school. He said, that's the problem. Just do what I ask you to do. You will dance like a madman for one hour. And God will wake your boss like he did Abimelech. And say, why have you not considered promoting this, my servant? Give the person double promotion or create another department. And you see people envying you. And the only thing they can say is, you are doing something that we don't understand. And they are not wrong. May your life be a mystery and a wonder in the name of Jesus Christ. The tribe of Issachar, they were men who stayed with God to receive strategies. That is why I encourage people to go for end of year retreats and receive strategy for this ministry. There are things that God has said for this year. Not just the prophetic word, but the things, the steps to take. The conference we are doing in UK, it's not just a human being. If I want to go and rest, I don't have to do a conference. I can smuggle myself there, go and lie down and come back. But this is a prophetic conference. Now you will see what that conference will become. And you will know that the hand of God was upon it. That it came by a Rema word. Can I tell you, when ordinary people look supernatural, it's because they are trading on supernatural secrets. We are ordinary, nothing unusual by ourselves. 
except that the power we have received, the wisdom that comes from heaven, when we put it to work, it produces extraordinary results that defy the intellect. This is the secret. Please lay your hands on your head in one minute. I want you to cry for the next one minute. Lord, what is the strategy for the next level of my prophetic destiny? Reveal it unto me. Someone open your mouth and pray. Someone open your mouth and pray. Prophet, pray. Apostle, pray. Man of God, pray. What is the strategy? For the next season of my life. What is the strategy for raising my children? Now that they, they have become teenagers. What is the strategy to restore my crumbling business? What is the strategy to ward off these attacks that are coming from left, right and center? Someone pray, someone pray. Reveal to me. Reveal to me. The strategy for victory. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 24. Please give us verse 32, I believe. Matthew 24. Jesus is teaching now. And he says, now learn a parable of the victory. When the branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves you know that summer is near that means there are signs that can point to you that seasons are ending and seasons are beginning 33 it says so likewise when ye shall see these things know that it is near even at the door do you know what that means there are things god will always show you he said, call unto me and I will answer. And I will show you great and mighty things that you do not know. Lord, what is the sign that this season is coming to an end in my life? What is the sign that I'm entering the prophetic season of my ministry? What is the sign that I'm entering the apostolic season? What is the sign that you are bringing partners to my life? What is the sign that things are shifting in my life? He said, when you see these things know that summer is near have you seen your signs has god shown you a sign that when you see it know that that child is a child of prophecy when you see that sign when you see that sign know that you will not cry again even though you may not have a husband he may be gone but there is a sign that i will give you for some, the sign can be the coming of Elijah. The moment you see Elijah come, woman of Zarephath rejoice. For some, it can be the sign of Jesus himself. Dear widow at Nain, your husband just died. Your only son just died. You are about to go and bury him. But when you see Jesus coming, rejoice. If it's the woman with the issue of blood, your sign may be a crowd passing. The moment you see the crowd passing, the Messiah is part of them. Discern him and touch the hem of his garment. For some, the sign can be blind but Bartimaeus. Listen to the conversation of those who are passing. You are blind. The moment you hear them talking about the root of David, he is the one. Cry, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. Hmm. Woe betides a man in this end time who does not know the sign that announces the arrival of his miracle. Have you seen the sign that means the healing anointing has come? Have you seen the sign that means it's time to start church? Have you seen the sign that it means it, it, the, the, the darkness is gone? He made lights for seasons. Every season has a light. There is a sign. If you have not stayed in the place of prayer to get those signs, let me tell you, you can abort seasons in your life and not know. How are you sure that the wise men coming are not coming to kill baby Jesus? Why did you receive them? Because there was a sign that told you that they were coming to give gifts of gold, frankincense, and man. There were signs that God gave me. 
there are signs that God has given me now. That when those signs come, it means certain, certain seasons have been opened in ministry. So while I look up to him ultimately, my eyes are fixed like the wise men on those signs. And the moment you see that sign, that's it. For someone, God is going to give you a sign and say, the moment you see that there is one long week of strange favor from Monday to another Monday, favor non-stop, know that that grace is near you. That should be your time of fasting and prayer to receive that mantle. You will be surprised. Someone gave me a car on Monday. Someone gave me the car key of a house on Tuesday. Aha! Uh -huh. You recall what the Holy Ghost said. Instead of jumping around and typing nonsense on social media, that's the time of consecration. Lord, I know that this grace for favor is around my corridor. And you begin to engage based on the sign that you were given. And one week becomes forever because it has landed. But for someone, because you do not have the discernment to receive, one week will come and go. And you just say, ah, what happened that last month? It was a sign. He told you. Go and see. The God is a God of signs. I will cause the sun to move by 15 degrees. When you see it, know that this has happened. For many of you, God has been introducing signs in your life. When you see this sign, know that the mantle of the prophetic has come. It came and it passed because you did not see it. That's why God is bringing this message. There are some of us, there are signs that God has given you to know that your destiny helpers have arrived. When the sign came, you were distracted and you were not discerning. The person God sent as a destiny helper, that was the day the devil made sure you were angry. You insulted your destiny helper, he apologized and left you. Look at your life now. Could it be that this message itself is somebody's sign? That God told you the day you see apostle teaching on this, it is because the cloud has shifted and has come to your favor. May you not miss out this season. I'm saying it prophetically. May you not miss out this season through lack of discernment. And of the tribe, the men of Issachar, they had understanding of the times. It was Benihim that prophesied. He mentioned three fathers of faith and he said God told him that the moment these global fathers of faith go to be with the Lord, the last one among them was I think Billy Graham, that the moment that guy goes to be with the Lord is an announcement that a prophetic season has changed in the church. There were others who were discerning. So while we mourn the death of these people, there were others who quickly went and said, Lord, we see our signs. It means then that there are graces and mantles looking for men. There are others who were just commentators. Wow, this man just died. When you see the veil of the temple tear, it is more than a miracle. It is a sign that something is happening at Calvary and at the grave. Don't just rejoice that the temple is torn. Discern what you have seen. Let me tell you, I've shared with you tonight one major secret about my life. My life is full of signs and of tokens that signify seasons, that verify seasons. There are things God told me about my life, this ministry, His hand upon our lives. And as I look up to Him, I also look up to the signs. And there you see the sign. The moment you see the sign coming, you know when to shut down. You know when to prepare yourself. That's why you find out that there are people who it looks like you have exhausted them and then they come up from another dimension again because they know the signs that control power. Again, I want you to pray and cry unto God. Lord, grant me the grace, the discernment to be able to see my sign. The sign that signifies seasons. The strategy that empowers me. Please open your mouth and pray. Alasha prakete perendo sadia kash. Herosa zivene kosha lagradevene kete pas. When you see this sign, 
recognize that the harvest is near. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. I'm going to give you I'm going to give you four prophetic instructions to wrap up this message. These prophetic instructions came to me by revelation while I prepared this message. Listen to me. If you follow the order of Issachar, you will never be disadvantaged. Take it from me. You belong to an apostolic and a prophetic ministry. You see, the advantage of the apostolic and the prophetic is that it's able to bring perspective and meaning to the word of God. So the word of God does not just come to you just plainly and blindly without a point of application. By the agency of the spirit, you are able to walk with scripture and then bring a prophetic dimension to the speakings of God over your life. Pay attention. These four prophetic instructions are not just for me, but it's for the body of Christ. This is my contribution as revealed by God. These are the prophetic strategies for the times that we live in. This is true for our nation. This is true for businesses. This is true for individuals. And please, I want you to pay attention. I do not claim to know everything. We are all students, learning from God, learning from the fathers. But I can tell you there are things that we have been given as an election of grace. And in as much as we honor the body, we stand confident upon the office that he has given us. So some of the things you are hearing are not cunningly devised fables. No. Is someone ready? Four prophetic instructions for this tribe of Issachar to thrive, especially in the seasons that are unfolding. The first instruction is in James chapter 1. And verse 19. Let me tie it up quickly and then we'll pray. It says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. This is the first prophetic instruction. This came by the Spirit to me. For you, my dear people, and then by extension for the body of Christ. First instruction. Let every man, let how many men? Be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Believe me, men and women are going to lose their bishopric because of compromising on this instruction. There are many people who if they do not manage themselves in business, in ministry, and so on and so forth, this is a time that requires high level discernment. Be quick to hear, but be slow to speak and be slow to anger. Because there are many things you will call God that is not God. And there are many things that you will call evil. And you will not know that it is light coming out of darkness. Listen very carefully. Instruction number one. Let every man be swift to hear slow to speak slow to wrath there are many good things God is doing in your life that will stimulate anger in your life you will need self-control to allow what is doing to come to fruition because at the end of it you will find out that even your being thrown into the lion's den is for your exaltation so you need a lot of self-control. This getting angry and boiling over nothing, many people will abort prophetic seasons because of the absence of self-control. There are many of us that need to trust God. Once you can just calm down, you will see the hand of God rearranging things. And then you will find out, like my precious people sang, that what the enemy meant, what was that thing you said again? What the enemy meant for evil, I think you should sing that, that part for me again. You take what the enemy meant for evil. Very powerful. And you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Sing it one more time. Very prophetic part. You take what the enemy meant for evil. And you turn it for good. You turn it for good. But here's my question. Do you have the patience to allow God finish his work? 
Or are you angry that you want to interrupt God? God, you are too slow. Let me show you how it is to be fast. You hear that they are about to sack you and you say, God, they are about to sack me. And he says, stand still. Stand still with five children and 11 relatives. God, you must be wicked. You are seated in heaven, dear streets of gold. And God says, all right, if you think I'm too slow, go ahead. And you go ahead and you find out it was a rumor. Your fear and anger now makes that rumor a self-fulfilling prophecy. They say we were looking for one person to drive. It was a rumor that it was you. But now that you have demo, you came by yourself as a sign that you are ready to leave the job. Hear me. Prophetic instruction number one. Dear Issachar generation. Be slow. Be quick to listen. Be slow to speak. There is something called due season. There are many of you, you preserve your honor by speaking only when necessary. Most of us, you have cheapened the value of your destiny. Your words no longer carry life and power because you have wasted it upon the ears of those who do not deserve to hear you speak. You must understand the value and the power of your words. Let your words carry power and weight that if your words actually come out they come out when needed are we together be quick to listen satan will try to challenge you provoke you to speak it takes a lot of self-control and discernment the bible says a word spoken in due season say due season prophetic instruction Number one, I repeat again, be quick to listen. Nigeria, Africa, body of Christ. This is a prophetic word for the Lord, from the Lord. James 1, 19 is my first prophetic word. Be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Let's finish it, verse 20. Why does the Bible say slow to wrath? He said, for the wrath of man walketh not the righteousness of God. When you allow uncontrolled anger to lead you, it will most likely lead you out of the will of God. Are we together now? Prophetic instruction number two. Is someone listening now? Obtain light through the ministry of the word. Obtain light through the ministry of the word. Obtain light from the ministry of the word. Refuse to walk in darkness. This is what God told me. Romans 15 and verse 4. Let's hurry up please. Romans 15 and verse 4. The Bible says, For whatsoever things were written aforetime, they were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scripture might find hope. There is nothing happening to you now. There is nothing happening to us as a nation. There is nothing happening to your business that has not happened before. It was written so that we may find hope. Obtain light from scripture. This is the wrongest time to depend on emotions. The believer and the spiritual man is only spiritual to the degree to which you have submitted to the word of God as final authority in all matters, regardless your emotions. Are we together? Written a four time for our learning. Psalm 119 and verse 130. Psalm 119 still on prophetic instruction number two. 119, 130. The entrance of thy word, it says... Give it light. Say light. And the Bible says it gives understanding to the humble or the simple. It is dangerous to run your life and your family neglecting scripture. Light must come from scripture. More than newspaper, more than social media. This is a time in your life where you must respect the supremacy and the value of the word. The believer is not just one who is saved and has given his life to Christ, but one who has constrained his life to be governed by the word of God. Obtain light. Don't walk in darkness. Don't speak in ignorance. Make sure you have a biblical perspective to everything. And from that perspective, you act. Number three. 
The third instruction God gave me. Are we, are we receiving tonight? Watch and pray. Watch and pray. The third prophetic instruction that I received from the Lord. Watch and pray. Matthew 26, 41, please. Give it to us. Matthew 26 and verse 41. Jesus was speaking to the disciples. He said, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. It says the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. I'll not say so much here because I had a teaching on this very um, word watch and pray watch is a function of intelligence in other words do not throw your intelligence watch and pray you will need the faculty of your mind as well as the spiritual advantage to resist temptation in this time don't just pray blindly watch and pray watch means you will make use of your mind your mental development will add to your stability, your preservation, and your security. Then he says pray. He didn't say pray and watch. There is a role. Your mind must understand certain things, and then you can gain higher perspectives from the Spirit. For many people, we are praying and throwing away our minds. That's why even what we receive from the realm of the Spirit cannot be converted to a context that blesses us. Spirituality does not ignore the place of intelligence. Please hear me. I teach on over dependence on the mind, not dependence of the mind. The mind is a useful tool as far as the manifestation of the life of God is concerned. Are we together now? In fact, the Bible says receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. Watch and pray. Ezekiel 22 and verse 30, a popular scripture here. I sought for a man. Watch and pray. Can I tell you sincerely? I know that we are going through a very difficult phase across the nations, particularly in Nigeria. We just finished our election. There's another set coming. Believers, we must pray. We must pray like never before the prayer ministry of prophetic intercession. We need intercession rising from the north, the south, east, and the west. Discussing issues have never really solved them. It may start the process, but there are things that we must settle from the realm of the spirit for anything that brings glory to God to be made manifest. We must pray. I sought for a man to stand in the gap. We must pray. Pray for the soul of our nation. Pray for the politicians. Pray for... I, I gave you a prophetic instruction here. I'm not going back there. I told you three uh, groups. Remember? Remember the prophetic word I gave you here? I said there are three groups we must pray for. And I'm still saying it again. One, INEC. Two, law enforcement agencies. But three and most important, the judicial, the judiciary especially the supreme court i will leave it there but you should know that i don't speak as a fool hallelujah when pray for these three entities with all your heart i repeat one INEC, two law enforcement agents that means uh, uh, police military dss three pray for our entire judiciary election tribunals but especially the Supreme Court. Are we together? Prophesy to someone, say, watch and pray. Watch and pray. The person had the watch part, say, pray. Pray. I believe in the ministry of prayer. Please do not downplay and ignore prayer. When I say prayer, I always like to qualify it. Prophetic intercession. There is a place where you pray for yourself, I have taught you. But right now, we need to move past the realm of self-centeredness. And for God's sake, make our spiritual contributions to pray for our lives, for our nation, for Africa, for businesses, for the program of God. Third prophetic instruction for the Issachar generation, watch and pray. Watch and pray. Number four. This one surprised me because 
you'll be surprised to know that this fourth one came very early this morning very very early this morning that's when this came john chapter 3 and verse 31 the lord spoke to me and said tell my people to reject a victim mentality i didn't understand what that meant i mean i'm looking for serious issues what is victim mentality again listen carefully tell my people to reject a victim mentality and this was the scripture he gave me i woke up with this scripture he that cometh from above is above all all what that's the question all what all what when the bible says all anything lower than god is that all he that cometh from above is above he that is of the earth is earthly and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. Listen, there is a victim mentality that believers have. And the Lord used a figure in the Bible and I had to study him. The man Daniel, one of the graces God is releasing upon the body of Christ is the that mantle that was upon daniel daniel was a man who from scripture he reigned through the dispensation of four different kings and nobody could push out his relevance listen carefully number one was nebuchadnezzar number two was belshazzar is that true number three was darius number four was cyrus four kings and he reigned through the four dispensations and nobody could throw him out of relevance. Now, I'm not just speaking in terms of politics and all of that. But do you know, there are many believers today who clamor and pray, even as touching politics, governor, house members. It is not because they really desire a glorious nation. It is because we have educated ourselves through a victim mentality that if I have my person or someone who can advocate my personal interest, I stand a chance to be happy, whether for the next four years or the next eight years. Let me tell you what the Bible says. It says, woe to him that puts his strength in a man. Daniel is that one man that came, even though a Jew, he came to Babylon, Daniel 1 and verse 8. One determination that Daniel made, that Daniel proposed in his heart, that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat. Because of that decision, I can begin to show you all the things that happened to Daniel. When you read chapter 5 and verse 10, when they were drinking with the vessels of, that they brought from the temple, the wife of King, Be I think that should be Belshazzar now. She began to make all kinds of noise and she called and said, there is trouble here. Oh. And verse 12, they brought Daniel and they said, there is a man who has an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding in interpreting of dreams and so on and so forth let's go down to verse 28 we'll read to 30 and stop at 30 for sake of time he was interpreting the handwriting on the wall mene mene he says thy kingdom is divided and given to the medes and the persians 29 and commanded belshazzar and they clothed daniel they clothed daniel with a scarlet and all of those things happen. Look at what happened in verse 30. The Bible says that night was Belshazzar the king slain. 31, the last verse says, And Darius the Median took the kingdom. He prophesied, O oh, king, you have been weighed and you have been found wanting. The Bible says that night the king was slain. And when Darius came, if somebody prophesied and somebody died and you come, it will be stupid for you to throw that person away. Let me tell you the truth. Depending, I'm saying this responsibly, depending on any businessman, politician, 
uh, uh, what they call it, captain of industry, to magically change your life because of the sympathy and affiliation of bloodline and the rest. You are already practicing idolatry, not knowing. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Believe me when I tell you this. God uses men. But please hear me, believers, and hear the word of the Lord. I am telling you, take away a victim mentality. You come from above. And whether you are in Russia, you are in America, you are in Nigeria, you are in the north, south, east, and west, provided you are in the will of God, the Bible says, thanks be to God, which causes us always to triumph. Shout, I can never be a victim. Let the devil hear you, I can never be a victim. Carry that mentality. There is no business structure. There is no political party whatsoever. When you advocate righteousness, it's because of the purposes of God. Not fear that your interest would have been sabotaged. No. Because your economy is driven from heaven and by heaven. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? That is the reason why you find people having a lot of balloon success. Under a particular government or dispensation, say, they will reign and thrive and do well, and then another government will come, and you find out that they go down. Not Daniel. From chapter 1, chapter 5, chapter 6, Daniel only kept going upward and forward and moving and excelling. Even in Egypt, Isaac sowed in that land and received that same year and hundredfold and all kinds of increases came to his life. Can I tell you, it is a mentality I have carried as a person. Is a mentality I have carried as a man of God. Is a mentality I have carried as a leader that I can never be disadvantaged. This is not some Pentecostal gibberish. I have indoctrinated myself to believe that one with Christ is not only a majority, is victory. Victory personified. I carry the spirit of the living God. I live by the word of God. I submit to the governing authority of the king. No. If you carry a victim mentality, people started carrying victim mentality more formally from after the pandemic. In fact, during the pandemic, there are businesses that had no business crashing, but because they carried a victim mentality, people keep endorsing failure and give all kinds of flimsy excuses. I'm, I'm an empathetic person. I'm not speaking irresponsibly. But let me tell you, you must, you must guard up your loins tonight. And receive this prophetic word and say no excuses for failure again. I am not a victim. The Bible declares that he that cometh from above. Many people right now in Nigeria, there are battles for or against different political parties, you know, from presidency down. And I can submit to you that there are people who are pursuing the cause of righteousness. They have the track record, they have the antecedents, and there are people that we, we love and honor. But there are people who are largely pursuing their interests. When you see people begin to clamor, it's because where they think money will pour from has now been closed. And they can't afford to have it closed that long. The Lord is my shepherd. The Bible did not say the Lord is shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. He may not be our shepherd. I don't know what you believe. But the Lord is my shepherd. Somebody say my shepherd. Thank God for the government. But I've said it. And you know that I, I love people. I love the body of Christ. I'm not a politician. But let me tell you. There is no government, I don't care what political party, that will magically solve the problem of any nation like that. The Bible says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. The Lord steps before the leadership. Thank God for the prophetic words. We'll continue to do our due diligence in guiding God's people towards that which God says. But let me submit to you. Putting your strength in men. God uses men. But all blessings come from God through man to man. Some of you now, maybe your uncles lost election. Some of you right now, maybe your, your loved ones, maybe your brothers, maybe, and you are now wondering, where will my house rent come from? 
He would have allowed me to finish. Now my building is at limited level. Will I leave it for eight years? No. Don't think like that. Fought prophetic instruction. I am not a victim. I come from above. I obtained the mantle that was upon Daniel that made Nebuchadnezzar to recognize and honor him. The mantle that was upon him. Are we together? That made um, King Belshazzar, Darius, and Cyrus all of them in fact when you read modern history it says he reigned more than just those four kings he reigned in total of about eight kings it's just that we have four recorded according to the account of daniel i cannot be a victim no i refuse i reject i cannot be a victim not in any nation i don't need to know the president of a nation to thrive it is an advantage if i get to know him but if i enter that nation he said blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord comes by that office this is the mentality that i carry thank god for the advantage of relationships to businessmen politicians captains of industry etc etc but i submit to you by the authority of god's kingdom the basis for my confidence is never any connection to men and systems it is that the god of heaven who rules above all he's still alive reject a victim mentality stop asking questions now my uncle lost the election now this one happened now i did not do this is this how my life don't speak like that he that cometh from above is above all and since i come from above i declare let the devil let the cosmos know that i am from above defended by the jealousy of elohim are we together this is how much he loves me you must have that mindset i don't know about you but I, I have been indoctrinated by the love of jesus towards me it's as if i'm the only one he loves on earth and don't you think this is a preacher's sermon i took time to get the revelation of the love of jesus to sink into my spirit no shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming out to me. No shadow you won't light up, no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up. And of the sons of Issachar, men who had an understanding of the time, and they knew what Israel ought to do. There were 200 of them, and the Bible says that their brethren were at their command. So when men say there is a casting down, they find out that your mentality and your conversation is different. There are people already now saying, ah, which government will come into power now? Is it this? Is it that? We're in trouble. Why will you call yourself grasshoppers when he did not call you a grasshopper? No. Caleb said, let us go up at once. We are well able. We are well able. As far as the purposes of God is concerned, my precious people sang it for you, that no weapon fashioned against you will prosper. Do you not believe that? Make reference to my teaching, exceeding great and precious promises. The Bible says that by them, we might be the partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss. I am a victor, never a victim. In the name of Jesus, Koinonia is victorious. Even in the midst of the flood, we are taken by the Spirit and kept upon Mount Ararat way far beyond any limitation that no enchantment and no divination against you will try do you believe that carry that mentality take away fear from your life oh i didn't get visa to go to 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 relocate to canada or to relocate to america or to relocate to uk in this nigeria again i'm finished don't say such things you are finished means what jesus already said it for you so you don't say it again finished no do you believe what i taught you tonight
that number one, you must be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Can I tell you, if you have the spirit of anger, it is demonic. Even all of us in our family, yes, I respect you, but it's demonic. Make sure you start doing something about it from now. It is a demonic thing. Uncontrolled anger. Me, eh? That's how we are. Once we are angry, even God knows. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Don't call God inside. If it needs you to work on it, humble yourself and say, this is a wicked spirit. There are many of you, anger is the reason why you may not enter the promised land. You know what stopped Moses from entering the promised land? Anger. Even with the height of his encounter, you will think a man who spent more than 90 days with God face to face, anger will automatically evaporate from him. There are many things that will try to agitate you so that you abort your prophetic destiny. But remember this sermon. When you want to speak, you just remember. Be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. Number two, you must contend for light that comes from scripture. Be careful with opinions, even popular opinions. Once it is not rooted in scripture, it does not have any potency to create any change as far as the realm of the spirit is concerned. For the Bible says in John chapter 1 and verse 3, it says all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. Is that in your Bible? Yeah. All things were made by him, including your life. If you ignore the word of God, you have put yourself at a point of risk. Number three prophetic instruction I gave you after the order of Issachar is that you must watch and pray. You must cry for the grace to be discerning. Don't allow things to happen around you and then you do not sustain the seeing eye and the hearing ear. And number four, you must reject a victim mentality. He said, now thanks be to God which causes us always to triumph. Is that true? He says, this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Nay, in all these things, he says, we are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors. So you do not carry a victim mentality. Thank God for the prophetic things that are playing around and playing out in government. But whatever happens, happens minus fear in your life. Mm -mm. Fear cannot be the reason why you are advocating. Or, no, no. Your confidence should be settled that you are protected by the jealousy of Elohim. Is that true? That when men say there is a casting down, don't let people start speaking some of these proverbs and wise saying, we we'll all eat our fingers. Tell the person, I love you, I respect you, but it is not in the Bible. I do not believe what you are saying. It is minus me. What the Bible says is that when men say there is a casting down, see i have taught you that every time there was famine in scripture there are there were two people in the bible who did not suffer famine number one was the king number two was the prophets the priest priesthood and kingship were immune from famine and the bible says according to revelations 5 and verse 10 that you have been made unto our god kings and priests you are both choose anyone you will still survive Are we together? Nobody can cut short my life when it is not my time. No. The immunity of my assignment, that's what they call diplomatic immunity. It covers you and preserves you. When it is time like Jesus Christ, you pour yourself like a drink offering, but not out of fear. We do the things that we do full of confidence, not the fear of death. But knowing that longevity is your inheritance in Christ and you can place a demand upon it by faith. The times and the seasons should not make you poor. Don't believe it. Don't. Don't believe it. For the path of the just, the Bible declares it as a shining light that shines ever brighter even unto the perfect day. That's what the Bible says. Apostle, but there is darkness everywhere. The Bible says God can cause light to come out of darkness, not just into darkness. Even in darkness, he can still manufacture light. There's no excuse for remaining down. No. Man of God, don't say ministry will go down. You know the way people are, people will be afraid. There is no such thing as that. Your realities are defined by your spiritual orientation. Are we together now? 
the Lord gave the word. Great was the company of them that published it. Can we stop here for tonight? Please rise up on your feet. This is what I believe. And of the sons of Issachar. Now please lend me your attention and let's do some two or three minutes prayer and then we're done. The first prayer is a repetition of a prayer that you prayed earlier on. That God will grant you the grace to discern the prophetic seasons you are in and the seasons that are about to unfold for you. And then you may also want to add that the Lord will grant you access to the strategy. I repeat the strategy again for the season. Lord, what do I need to do? When the wise man came to Jesus, the rich young ruler, he said, Good master, what do I need to do to be saved? He knew as a rich young ruler that there was always a strategy for victory. Lord, what is the strategy you are bringing for my victory? Please open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Begin to pray. One minute. Pray. The strategy that is allocated for my dominion in this season, I obtain grace. The strategy that is allocated for my dominion in this season, I obtain grace. Hallelujah. We are going to take the last prayer point and as always, as a responsible apostolic and prophetic ministry, we are going to pray for Nigeria. I gave you a prophetic word last week and I told you, you have handed over this nation to God. I want you to relax. If you don't trust yourself, trust God. Are we together now? We are going to pray for this nation. We must raise our voices and decree and declare that in the name of Jesus, the counsel of the Lord will stand and we are going to speak over the election that is coming and decree and declare there will be no bloodshed, loss of lives and that God will arise in his power and see that his purposes are established upon our nation. Lift your voice and pray. Pray passionately and responsibly as a believer. Someone is praying. Passionately and responsibly. Your mercy speaks over our land. In the name of Jesus, Nigeria, we decree and declare that you must be a manifestation of God's prophetic agenda. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, we prophesy over the elections coming. Father, we pray that you protect and preserve your people. In the name of Jesus, let there be no bloodshed by the power of the Holy Ghost. Preserve your people by the power of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, we pray for our dear nation. Let your purposes and your purposes alone stand. Let your purposes and your purposes alone be birthed. In the name of Jesus, we thwart every plan and every counsel of the wicked. In the name of Jesus, we pray for INEC. We pray for the law enforcement agencies. And we pray in the name of Jesus Christ for the judiciary, especially the Supreme Court. Lord, grant grace by the power of the Holy Spirit. Your counsel for this land stands. Your counsel for Nigeria stands. Your counsel for the 36 states stands. Your counsel for the six geopolitical zones stand. In the name of Jesus, Satan, you have lost it over our nation. You have no power to enforce any agenda of darkness. It is the purpose of God for Nigeria that stands. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, as we wrap up, let me speak over your life. I believe in the power of the prophetic. I believe in its ability to program a climate of spiritual possibilities. 
and it is the assignment of the prophetic and even priesthood to speak and declare over God's people it's important to receive the blessing with all your heart these are not mere speakings of a man's word it is as inspired by the Holy Spirit I want to speak over everyone here the arrows of bloodshed the arrows of bloodshed over you and over your loved ones we command it returns back to hell no one no one under the sound of my voice will be a victim of bloodshed number two everybody connected to you by physical descent or by responsibility for your sake i declare that they are supernaturally preserved in the name of jesus i pray over your finances in the name of jesus the son of the living god i cry by god that this night may help arise for you from his sanctuary may help arise for you from his sanctuary you will not beg in the name of jesus god will use men god will use systems to make for your supplies number four i decree and declare that even in this season hear me koinonia nothing dies in your hand nothing dies in your hands in the mighty name of jesus if there is anybody here appointed unto death that there is any manifestation of a curse or any manipulation of the spirit of death that in the realm of the spirit they've concluded over you or your children whether through the elections or any other means i knock on the door of death and i command it to be far from you far from your habitation hallelujah every time there is famine every time there is economic and political turbulence one of the mysteries in the kingdom that preserves god god's people is favor can i speak over your life in the name of jesus the son of the living god you belong to a family that has been marvelously helped by god i pray experience favor i pray for you experience favor experience favor favor from the north favor from the south favor from the east favor from the west two more prayers i want to place a grace on you that causes those who need what you carry to look for you in the name of jesus whether it is an anointing or a gift a skill any kind of value that can make you to be of demand and to live a rewarded life i stir up that gift by the grace of god in the name of jesus christ let those who have an appreciation for what you carry i compel them to locate you i compel them to engage you and i compel them to reward you in the name of jesus christ Finally, let me pray for your spiritual life and your walk with God. At times of political, economic turbulence, we call them perilous times. Many believers, if they do not manage their, their faith process, they find out that their spiritual lives begin to decline, either because of laxity or discouragement. Anytime things look like it is not the way you want economically, politically, and otherwise, that is not the time to run away from the things of God. It is the time to run closer. For the Bible declares that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. It says the righteous man runneth to it and he is saved. Let me pray for your prayer life. Let me pray for your word study life. Let me pray for your appetite for spiritual things. It will not go down. 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 In the name of Jesus. This week, I release you a sign and a wonder. I release you a savior. 
I release you a witness. I release you ambassadors of the kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ. May no one despise the anointing and the mantle upon your life. For in Jesus name we pray. Let me reiterate for one last time before we wrap up. Thank you for your patience. That please carry the word for the UK conference. Do us good to inform um, everyone about our United Kingdom Apostolic Conference. And then for all who are following, do well to inform everyone, especially about the workforce volunteers. Please register. And then for those who are giving already, by next week when we come, it will be my first announcement when I mount the stage. We'll officially release the posters, the dates, the venue. Every other information will be out. And we trust God for a great time. Have you been blessed tonight? We're going to share the grace in fellowship. And when we do, may I please request that for time and then because of the general security situation, if you can, please do give someone a lift or do make sure that you walk in groups. Be very, very careful moving on the road because we're trying to avoid opportunists and some of these touts who will lay and harass people. You are exempted from evil in Jesus' name. Together, let's share the grace in fellowship, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with us now and forever. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercies follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Thank you and see you on Sunday.